Hello and welcome. My name is Isha Yuvel and I'm the CMO at Cato Networks. I'm proud and excited to co-host this keynote presentation with Joel Jacobson, Global WAN Manager at Vitesco Technologies, one of our largest customers. We are going to learn today how a very large enterprise was able to accelerate and transform their global networking and security infrastructure with Cato Network's Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, platform. Cato is the creator of the first SASE platform. We founded the company in 2015 with the SASE vision, converging the one edge and network security into a cloud native platform. It wasn't called SASE then, but it was a radical departure from the pile of point solutions that grew taller in many enterprises over the years. In the five years since we launched, we have amassed over 800 enterprise customers with over 10,000 branches and cloud instances on our SASE platform, along with 250,000 remote users. I now turn it over to Joel to take us through the Vitesco Technologies deployment of Cato SaaS. Uh, thank you, Ishe. Uh, as you've already mentioned, my name is Joel Jacobson, uh, WAN manager for Vitesco Technologies. I'm here today to offer the folks watching an insight into how and why Vitesco Technologies moved from our first internally managed SD-WAN remote access service and cloud-based internet provider to the Cato network solution. In order to begin our story, I would like to provide a little background and insight into Vitesco Technologies. Vitesco Technologies began in early 2019 as a carve out of the Continental Automotive Group's powertrain division. Vitesco Technologies, which is a leading international developer and manufacturer of state-of-the-art powertrain technologies for sustainable mobility had sales in 2020 of nearly 8 billion euro and employs approximately 40,000 people in over 70 locations globally. These locations vary in size from our smaller sales, warehouse and finance locations to the larger engineering and production facilities needed to make the smart system solutions and components for electric, hybrid and internal combustion vehicles. Finding the right partner for our WAN solution would allow my team to help Vitesco Technologies continue to make mobility clean, efficient, and affordable. Once the carve-out was announced, our IT teams had numerous choices in replacing services, copy, rethink, or retire. Although my first thought was to retire, I'm far too young for that. And since retiring was not a viable option for the WAN service, we had to copy or rethink our approach. Some of the challenges we had to face had to do with timing and resources. Our typical global projects would often take three to five years to complete. We had less than that to work with. While the copy approach meant that we would be working with a tried set of solutions, it also meant that our small team of three WAN supporters would be hard pressed to take over the three separate solutions in place for WAN, remote access and internet services, even with the help of outside support. Uh, early on in the project, while we had some idea of what we wanted to do, we needed to narrow down our choices. We went through the typical key technical and business related requirements, such as availability, capacity management, and other security related topics. At the end of the day, we needed a way to support our 70 locations and 20,000 remote users with a solution that was simple, allowed us the ability to co-manage because we like to maintain, maintain control and with a DevOps approach within IT of whoever builds it, runs it. So whatever solution we came up with was a solution that we would need to support. Our first SD-WAN solution was put in place four years prior, and we knew that there had to be other solutions available. So working with a third party, C3 Technology Advisors, we narrowed down our choice to four solutions. It wasn't very difficult from there to see that only one solution on our list, Cato Networks, allowed us the flexibility to incorporate our WAN, internet and RAS solutions into one neat package that could be managed with a small team of people. The best part about choosing Cato Networks was the fact that they truly felt like a partner in our efforts 
and not just another provider we were paying for a set of services. One of the first things that Cato Networks provided with Tesco Technologies was one interface that allowed us to set up a new site with minimum of effort. What would have taken us days in the past to do with our other solutions, we could do in minutes. We no longer had to have a separate IDS, IPS device or additional on-premise firewalls, nor did we need five different tools to report on each of those services. In addition, we could bring our cloud-based services directly into the Cato backbone with our existing sites and treat them all the same. If rules needed to change for one site or all of them, it was very easy to set up the rule, distribute them globally, and see the results of those changes within the same interface. I mentioned earlier that the Vitesco Technologies WAN team like to have a hands-on approach in our solutions. Being able to make informed decisions when setting up services is key to making sure that those same services run smoothly. Our WAN configuration had a number of interesting topics to cover. China, Office 365, AWS interconnects, special applications, and threat prevention. One of the most critical topics we faced was China. Because of the Great Firewall, it was important that we had a provider that could keep internet traffic in country and get our Office 365 traffic out of the country without breaking any laws and in a fashion that allowed it to work as it did in the rest of the world. With Cato Networks, we were able to steer our traffic in China through a pop in Tokyo. Our team calls work just as well in China as they do in Germany or the US. The remainder of the internet traffic was routed out through the nearest pop in China. An additional concern for us was AWS. We have regional installations of cloud provider, and it was important to us that we were able to connect these sites into our network without a complicated peering or direct connect setup. It was even more important to us that we could reach two gig of throughput if required. We tested the throughput extensively and we were very happy with the results. Special applications, <laughs> we all know about those. Websites that are secured by access lists or need to be country specific. Most likely a site that needs to be up all the time. These special sites are typical applications like HR or legal websites, or in some cases, special engineering tools. And we, like many global companies, had to secure that traffic behind a single IP. Cato's ability to allow us to steer specific websites, domains, or IPs meant that we could do away with complicated routing or proxy settings and to have our users appear behind a specific IP as needed. Even better, if a Cato pop happens to go down, that IP can appear behind another pop and our services will continue to function. Lastly, we have threat prevention. It's on everywhere, remote access, internet, and at our locations. Having threat prevention built into our services means that even our smallest locations are protected from threats. One of the things we liked best about using Cato Networks was the fact that we could roll out gradually. We knew that in setting up the Vitesco Technologies WAN and in migrating our sites, that we would need to start slowly and pick up speed during the middle and end of the migration as we worked out any issues with our rollout process. Because this was a carve out, we first needed to establish our data centers and peering point between our old and new WANs. Once the peering points were established, the process of migrating our sites began. For our few, first few migrations, based on the experience we had gained with our last SD-WAN service, we allowed for three or four hours per site. By the time we got to our 10th migration, our window dropped to two hours, and rarely did we need more than one hour to cut a site over from the old service to the new. The actual outage time was usually no more than 15 minutes. We didn't cut any corners in migration. We established a run book with step-by-step -step instructions, worked with our locations prior to the migrations to set up the Cato sockets in parallel with our existing WAN service. And during the outage, we would switch from the old WAN equipment to the new WAN equipment, test the applications, failover, internet, and any other services that the site deemed critical. While I can't possibly include every detail of our migration, suffice it to say it has been a whirlwind of activity. We've learned a lot during the migrations. For example, our WAN and peering point firewall routing is built on BGP, and we can tell you that with over 7,000 routes between our old company and our new, 
the fact that the Cato sockets and backbone were able to handle that many routes made our pilot and migration much smoother than expected. Security is extended to each site on the WAN, no matter the size, and we know that our internet traffic is properly secured. Extending our WAN to AWS and Azure was easy with the Cato virtual sockets. And for providers or services where a physical or virtual socket aren't ideal, we can always use IPsec connections without having to buy or maintain additional firewalls or internet lines. As I stated early on, Cato Networks is a partner to Vitesco Technologies. Benefits such as high availability across the board from the cloud to the POPs and to our sites. We no longer need to have a regional hub or expensive co-location facility for our WAN or internet services. Our security team is pleased to know that Cato maintains the platform. And as we need to add capacity, it's a simple phone call or email to get it resolved. Analytic and security events are centralized in one place to make analysis easier. If we run into any questions about what we see, Cato is there to help us further. With the centralized tools, it's easy to know what policies we have applied and we know that they are consistent across our locations. We no longer need to worry that if we've installed 10 locations, we somehow made 10 different configurations. With Cato, we know they will all be the same. Thanks, Joe, for this comprehensive overview. Uh, and I'll ask a few follow-up questions for the benefit of the audience. Uh, so you had the opportunity to create a whole new network. Uh, this is a project that not many network managers uh, actually experience. What is your advice to peers that already have networks deployed how can they leverage SaaS in their environment? Uh, start gradually. Uh, expect that you encounter issues and the Cato networks will be there to help you through them, even if they aren't necessarily related to the services directly. Uh, we started with specific locations and progressed from there. Actually, we had started with our pilot. Uh, we put real locations uh, onto the pilot so that we could check and, and see that the the traffic, um, the flows, what we expected to occur, occurred. Uh, you can start with remote access first and proceed to your network later or just flip it around like we did. Uh, whatever works best for you. Great, thanks. So can you give us an example of how your network adapted to a new business requirement with Cato? Uh, yeah, uh, as a new deployment uh, and a, a carve out, we have, new things popping up almost regularly. Uh, you know, we needed to install a DMZ quickly into China. Uh, trying to go through the process of getting equipment, uh, buying firewalls, switches, routers, and then spending, you know, weeks, days, weeks, or months trying to get those configured uh, would have consumed time and taken us away from migrating locations. Uh, we were able with Cato and a bit of additional bandwidth uh, able to configure a security approved DMZ in a matter of days. Uh, this has allowed us to use our existing infrastructure uh, without uh, any additional cost uh, to bring something into service quicker than it would have been had we had done this uh, the traditional route. Okay, that's great. Um, so what's the next step for Vitesco Technologies Network and how will you leverage Cato? Oh, uh, this answer is going to be short. Uh, the first thing I really want to do is finish our migration. Uh, we've got a couple of sites out there that are kind of stragglers uh, that we'd like to get completed. And once we're done with that, we'll take a look at the additional services that the uh, Cato has to offer. Uh, one of the things that we have found is that uh, in, in working with Cato this past year, uh, if, if there's something that we see uh, or maybe their other customers have seen, it tends to make it into the service quickly. Uh, so even over the past year, uh, the services have expanded beyond what we had started with uh, in the pilot phase of our project. Uh, so once we're through these migrations, we'll come back and take a look at what's left. Okay, so my final question. Um, it is Kato's first time to ONU. As I mentioned, some members of the audience think we're too big to transform. We must go with point solutions. What can you say to them? Uh, I won't say that taking that step toward a cloud-based cloud WAN solution is easy. It's not. Uh, it, it is a risk. Uh, you have 
uh, somebody like myself uh, who likes to touch the equipment to know that it's working. I like all the flashy lights. Uh, I like to be able to know that uh, if I make a change, you know, what's going on in the background uh, is, is usually the case for a decision such as this one, you know, do your homework. Uh, we had a, a team of people uh, that we went through to check our requirements against Cato and other providers. Uh, we brought in a couple of folks that uh, had had utilized the services uh, or that could recommend them. Uh, we talked to people uh, and at the end of the day, we started with a pilot. Uh, and I would recommend don't be shy. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, we put real data insights in the test. Uh, we had uh, a couple of very adventurous locations uh, that were willing to be our uh, pilot users. Uh, for that, I am very grateful. Uh, we were able to get them on the network and actually see real life data uh, and, and services working. Uh, the other thing that we have going for us is I'm glad to be working for leadership that believes uh, that we should try the fail fast approach. And in our case, it worked out very well. We found a partner that is there to help us succeed. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, this was, uh, was a great session. I hope uh, the audience benefited a lot from your experience. Um, and to our audience, uh, if you're an IT uh, professional, an IT leader or trusted advisor, we would welcome the opportunity to give you a deeper dive into the Cato SASE platform. As Joel mentioned, your, for organizations of your scale, graduality is key. Cato can address any number of specific use cases, such as cloud migration, remote access, global connectivity, and branch transformation within a focused deployment. The underlying platform represents a strategic opportunity to expand the scope of the deployment to more use cases and continue and extract the value of, infra the value of infrastructure convergence. This is the strategic benefit of a truly elastic networking and security platform that is the Kelo Sassi Cloud. Visit our booth at Onog, uh, that's a virtual one, or drop us a note on our website at ketonetworks.com slash sassy. Thank you for joining and have a great experience at Onog Spring 2021.